the biggest thing with Robert was he really wanted to make sure whoever the actress was, which we weren't even officially, uh, we officially didn't know yet. We just wanted to make sure we were able to, to capture a performance on set that he was able to direct so that whatever the actress was, um, we, were, we were able to capture exactly what he was seeing and we were gonna be able to put that back on the screen for him later on. The big difference we can make um, on, on performance capture like this is because we have such a high fidelity mocap um, and we capture so much detail that we can, we can bring simple things to life, simple things that happen on, on screen. Um, for example, today I was looking at some, some uh, capture of Rosa and Hugo and Hugo is uh, changing her skate. And in the simple motion of Hugo taking her skate off and Rosa just reacting to that, you could actually see her whole leg move and then you could see her hip being pulled a little bit and you could actually see it all the way up into her head position and her shoulder. And it's, it's the little details like that that we're able to bring to life. And you can see in the character, once it's a CG character, um, and you can see those that extra detail that just brings it from a, a robotic CG character to Rosa or to a Natiri character or to Caesar. You can actually see the actor in that character and it just, it brings that extra bit of life to the, to the shots. A lot of it is um, our mocap crew. Um, which we have, we have guys that actually capture the, the mocap itself, the performance capture itself, um, adjusting cameras, um, making sure that everything's aimed at the right place. Um, we have other people that actually just, they're like a script supervisor. Um, they're, they're watching every take, finding out what worked, what didn't work, um, just ingesting all the data for us. We have a facial performance capture um, which he basically just runs around with uh, a little computer and it's attached to the, the little camera Rosa wears right here to always capture her face, to make sure the dots are all in the right place and that we're, we're capturing all the right information for uh, Rosa's facial capture. Um, and then we have our, our uh, typical onset crew, which is capturing the, the photos, the photos of everything, HDRI, things like that. Um, and uh, our scanning crew who actually scan every, th every environment so that we end up with a 3D model for every set that we shoot in. Grishka is, um, is huge. I mean, he's, he's got three incarnations, um, eight feet and nine feet tall, and he's played by um, Jackie, who is five, four maybe um, and he's uh, it's great because Jackie's Jackie plays it as a big guy um, he really when he starts moving around you would buy him as a eight foot tall character he he's really practiced and he's he's got that um, the feel of a really big guy um, and it's it's great great to see him do it um, the, the design itself, I mean, there's a lot of work to go in the, the different details in Gruishkas because he has a lot of mechanics to him um, that really have to be worked out to, to let him move his head around. There's a lot of pistons and things in his neck. Um, there's a lot of um, detail that really has to be moved around and, and worked out before we, uh, we really get something that works great. Zapan, I think, is going to be a great character, mainly because Ed is such a, uh, he was so great on screen. You really, the fact that we're going to keep Ed's face, um, he had such great facial posture and his, his just body language when he's fighting or even when he's just walking down the street, you buy him as a robot for some reason. Um, Ed is, 
there was something about him on screen that really, you could see him, even uh, in the mocap suit, you could see him as a really cool cyborg. Um, his design, his cyborg design is also really interesting because he's got lots of holes in him so that you can see the negative, negative space in him, um, which is, is, I think, really necessary so that you, you just know he's not a guy in a suit. Um, with the negative space, you, you obviously instantly know he's a cyborg and you know that um, it's just a cool character. For us, the manga is the is really the guideline. Um, the manga is a lot of the drawings are very simple, um, and but they sell the idea. So the manga is uh, the the comics. Um, we have them pinned all over our walls at work already, um, and we have it. We always try to keep the manga pinned up next to the artwork for the character, so that you just know the two and you know what the intention was from the manga and where the artwork was. And Lightstorm's done a really great job of, of pushing the manga designs into the artwork. Um, and our, our animation team is actually trying to follow the same ideas because you see poses in the manga that you wouldn't have thought about. So we're doing a lot of the motorball um, as we speak and the poses throughout the manga are really put the, the characters in these, these cool action poses that our animation team is trying to actually follow as many of those as we can too. So that we just try to bring them out. I mean, Robert's original intention was to just the first movie to really bring manga to life.